Hello a todos, welcome to another video of Julia Journey, Juggling Jargons Joyfully. In this video, we're going to be talking about the package.jl package, which is actually shaped by default with Julia and is responsible for installing packages and maintaining environments. This is essentially a prerequisite for one of our next videos, which is going to be about developing new packages. When we start developing packages, we're going to be using VS Code and package mode. So I thought it would be better to do this tutorial as well in VS Code. This is not inside any folder whatsoever. This is just VS Code recently opened. So to open the Julia terminal, we can just use Ctrl Shift P from VS Code and search for start repo this and press enter. Or we can use the shortcut for that, which is Alt J Alt O and that will open the Julia terminal for us down here. To enter the package mode, you press the close brackets. So remember, this is the close brackets. Inside the package mode, you can see the packages that are installed using status. This is the global environment, which is the default environment when you're not inside any project. Uh, you can see it's the default by this uh, version 1.9 information here. I am, of course, using version 1.9, so that's why. The packages will be listed here. You can see their name, the version that they have, uh, and here this green up arrow means that they could be upgraded if I wanted to upgrade a package I can just say up or update and they will be updated to the latest version to add a new package I can just say add and the name of the package for instance the package example the package example was installed it took a few seconds maybe three four seconds you can also install packages in a specific versions using the at symbol so add example at version 0.4, for instance, I can even be more specific and say 0.4.0 and those specific versions will be installed. When I'm developing packages, it might be useful to install other packages in specific branches. Uh, this, of course, means that I know uh, the, the name of the branch in the GitHub. So I could, for instance, be developing uh, my optimization package that depends on the uh, model package. And I say install the model package branch uh, new model or something like that. Of course, this is advanced usage, so normally you don't need this kind of thing. So if you found some package online that is not released yet and you want to try it, you can actually add it by just giving it the full URL. So you can say https.github.com slash whatever, whatever. So I showed this an example in my types video. I do the type tree using graphvis. So I was using graphvis in a specific branch. I think it was add engine or something like that. Uh, so you can actually try that specific thing that I did in your terminal. You don't have to install it on Pluto. And this will be the way to install it. So naturally, you don't want to install these packages on your, your global environment uh, most of the time. Uh, so you want to activate different environments and the way to do that is to use the command activate and then whichever environment that you want to activate. So if you just use activate, it will default to the global environment and but you can give it specific names. For instance, you can say I want to activate a temporary environment and this is going to be created in your temp folder and it's going to be deleted sometime in the future by your system. So don't rely on that. You can activate specific folders. For instance, here I have my personal projects, Julia Journey, and I can activate that. There is nothing there right now, so it's empty. Another interesting thing to do is activate shared environments. For instance, uh, the global environment is a shared environment, but sometimes I also want to do things uh, that are common for many different projects, like a data science project. So I could just activate at data science for, and, and and in this environment, I will have things that I normally use for data science. So I am now inside a specific folder. This is package and ends. I'm going to open a Julia terminal again, out J out O. You can see down here that I'm using the environment 1.9. So if I press close brackets, uh, I can see it now. Uh, and I can activate the environment at this current a folder, which could be, for instance, for a package that I'm developing, or it could be for experiments that I want to make reproducible. Uh, many reasons to install an environment in a folder. When I activate that, nothing changes until I add a package. So let's do that. For instance, package forward diff. After package forward diff was installed, we have now two new files in our folder. The project.tumble, so let me so the package.tumble file is uh, describing which are the dependencies that I have manually added to my package. So I, I say here depths, 
uh, and then the, the package name and this UUID. You don't want to edit this part manually, just leave package to do its, its job. This is similar to a requirements.txt file from Python. Uh, you can give it more information on what you want installed. So let's say I want the version. Um, so the current version is 0.10. So let's say I want to use version 0.10 in the future. So this will install version 0.10 something. Uh, it will not install version 0.11. You have a few ways of defining the compatibility of your package. So if I say 0.10 and 0.11, so if I say 0 0.10, 0 0.11, this means anything with the format 0.10.x or 0.11.x, okay? 0.12 is not going to be installed. I can be even more explicit and say equals to 0 0.10 and, and 0.10.1, for instance, and now that's the only version that's going to be available for this package. After changing the project file, I can update my environment you can see that the version that was installed now is version 0.10.1. This was forced by myself. And you can also see this information. The package is marked with this symbol, which is for diff. They have new versions, but the compatibility constraints restrict them from upgrading, which is exactly what we did here. So we don't want them to be updated. If I say this and I update, you can see it's going to update to the latest version again. Here it is. So the project.com of file can have more information. And when we are dealing with packages, creating our own packages, we're going to go back to it. But for now, just think of it as a folder where I need some environment information. One common reason of having this, this environment is because I want to do some experiments, uh, for instance, for a paper. And I want these experiments to be reproducible. The project.toml file is not sufficient to do that. So this is saying I want for a diff in some version. And even if I fix this version very, very strictly, the versions inside for diff, so the dependencies of for diff, they could change and I have no control over that. What actually helps with the reproducibility is the manifest.toml. And the manifest.toml has information on everything that was installed. So the Julia version that I use, the of course some specific format about some specific information about this project, but more importantly for us, all of the dependencies and their specific versions, uh, things that I have not touched at all. So this is the only thing that I have touched, uh, and all of the other things are implicit or installed by Forwardif. So this now enables us to be completely reproducible. When you have a manifest file in your folder, you can just instantiate. And from the instantiation, it's gonna try to install all of the packages that were described in the manifest.toml. And if you don't have a project, it's gonna create a project for you. But normally you want to ship both the project and the manifest for your reproducibility uh, objectives. One other thing, this is more specific to VS Code. Now that we already have a project.toml here, we can change the Julia environment that's automatically used. Uh, when you actually have an environment, you can see the environment of the folder here in the beginning, package and ems. And this is going to be important because if you have some file, you can run this file by just using alt enter here or alt shift enter and other options, of course, as we saw in the first video. And if I close my Julia, so here I'm closing it, I'm closing this terminal as well, and I try to open a new one, either by giving out enter or out j out o, the environment that's going to be created is the package env's. So don't worry about this, as I said in the first video that we did, the pyenv tries to do something that Julia ignores. Uh, close brackets and you see the default environment now for this session and this folder will be the environment inside this folder. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. It should have given you a taste of the power of package. We're going to see in the future how really powerful it is when we actually create our own package. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.